Hey guys, it's Mr. Dragon Triple Zero here, back with Automation, the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you see right in front of me is the People's Car Poverty Edition. I made this car about a few months ago and had an ambitious light goal of reaching 75 likes to make a sports edition of this car. Fortunately, we did reach our goal of 81 likes as of right now in the video, so this is going to be possible. With the sports edition that I'm going to build in this video, I'm aiming for the budget to be under $4,000 roughly. So right now, let's see what we could change with this car to make it more powerful. So first things first, let's go to the engine family here, and it's all locked, so let's keep it as is, around 295 cubic centimeters. Quality, everything is going to be as is, and for the compression, everything, maybe keep it as is, and possibly increase the cam profile too, I'll, I'll check that out a little bit later. So we'll go back here to the RPM limit, and let's just crank this up to around 4500, and right now, 9.9 .9 horsepower, not too bad. And even when you do increase or decrease the RPM limit, you're going to alter the engineering time. So it was at a 36.1, which is the old engineering time at 2100 RPM. Now since it's at 4500, the new engineering time is at 37.2, which would increase the price, I believe, to uh, 3600. So added $30 roughly. That's quite a lot. So around $400 away from going over budget. Let's we'll just put a regular single barrel in, that puts us at 10 horsepower exactly. And also putting a single barrel, we will also increase the fuel mixture now by quite a lot. Increases to around uh, pretty much as rich as possible and 13.3 because we do more than it's going to run too rich and decrease power and everything. And while I'm at it, increase the camp profile, put it to around, uh, let's, do, let's do a 60. 60 will do and there goes... <laughs> The torque decreasing and the power way up there. So let's keep on going until it freaking blows apart. And now any that, we can rev this pretty high at over 11,000 RPM. This is ridiculous, man. Let's do 6,000. Let's get it to around like maybe in the high 5,000. So let's do a 75 and not too much on the cam profile. So it's kind of matches out. 12.3, 12.3 power and torque right there. Exhaust wise, can I increase this? No, that would really choke it out. So increase the fuel mixture until we get something good out of this one. So we're at a 91.2. We got a lot of fuel octane to go. Let's even this out to a 50. And it's really starting to get a little bit better in terms of power. And we do got an awkward power curve going from like flattish, increasing, then kind of dipping a little, and then dip way down here. This is an awkward ass power curve. Compression, how much is it going to change? A little bit there. Let's do a 10. 10.0 on the compression. Uh, 0.1. All right, 14 horsepower, 14.1 pounds feet of torque. Okay. And increase this a little bit more in our uh, ignition timing till we get nearly at the octane limit. Okay, here we go. 68. Are we knocking? No, we're not. But it's underpowered according to the suggestions right there at 14.2 horsepower. This is ridiculous. What if I do decrease? Oh, even decreasing, it kind of increases a little bit of power. So 67 will do. I might as well change out the carburetors here if I need to or not. What would this bring me up to? 36.2. Fair enough. How about top speed wise? 55 miles an hour. And also about this vehicle, our goal is to get it above 62 miles an hour. That is pretty much priority number one with this vehicle. So top speed, 56.7 miles an hour. Poor fuel economy around 10 miles per gallon. That is just ridiculous, man. And tire wise, let's bump this up to around like a no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Look at this. Under steering, up and a little over steering. <laughs> How, man? 95s? Will this do uh, a little bit better? 105s front and back? Seems okay. For the brakes, put some better brakes on here. Just basic drum brakes, front and back, as is. But let's increase the size a little bit in the front. And same thing for the back. You know what's true? Let's put some forged pistons, decrease the fuel octane by one here. And let's see if it can squeeze a little bit more power by putting in a bit more compression on here. Which will now all of a sudden uh, knocking right now. Can I... Up the cam profile. Yes, I will. Now we're at a 14.5. Are we still knocking? No, we're not. But we got less yellows now. We just got a few blues and a red here saying it's still underpowered for its weight. Oh, Lord. Changes to a short cast. Boom. There we go. Increase the bag a couple horsepower, right? 14.5 to a 16.0. So 1.5 horsepower gained. <laughs> Now we're at 58 miles an hour, almost 59-ish, I swear. I did check if you add another gear on here, 58.7. Let's just do two gears to make it more of a challenge. The same gearbox, but a powerful, a little more powerful engine. 
So everything's still all good. Let's keep the crappy brakes because we don't need to brake that hard or anything with this vehicle, especially for what this is. And while I'm at it, since I kind of thought about this, throw up the two barrel. And still single car, really? I swear, four barrel. Really? Let's spread out the big guns and go four barrel. Steal some of that American technology, put this in this goddamn vehicle, and we're getting more expensive. Dude, we're so close. Almost 59 miles an hour. 59 exactly right now. This is... <laughs> Come on, man. I swear. How much would this cost putting some freaking VVT in this vehicle? Put a knockoff VTEC engine. 38.4. And barely increase the top speed by one tenth of a mile an hour. If I use an automatic transmission, that's really going to bog it down. But increased drivability, weight, oh, everything else there decreases. Advanced automatic, not so much. Manual, it's the only way possible. Okay, I just found something. Tires really make a difference. 59 miles an hour for hard, long-life tires. Medium compounds, 58.7. And even worse, with the semi-slicks at 57.4. Is it because the grip is wearing us down, or what? Would radios make any sense? Oh, wow. 60. And we're getting close, $150 away from the max budget, $4,000. we are near that sweet 62, but I do want to increase the top speed a little bit more just to get, uh, basically to increase the tolerance so it does get to its top speed, not just, like, max out at, like, right here at 61-ish and pretty much end the run right then and there and do some file mining to make it possible to get the top speed. Now, yeah, four barrel, we can definitely increase the fuel mixture. So wait till it gets red. So a 30 right here. We're not going to do injection because injection's too advanced for us. While I'm at it, how much would an injection cost? So direct injection, this will be like a 42, right? 41. So over budget right then and there. If not, I have to resort to a mechanic or something. Something very basic, super duper basic. How about single point? 16. Four barrel, race setting, 16.4. So worse of a single point, a mechanical, still expensive. Single? How much would this cost? Oh boy, 39.9. <laughs> Let's try the carburetor. If not, use the mechanical fuel injector. So four barrel, race boy, and where do we stand in top speed? 0.8. Increase. No, decrease. Still no. Wait, are you kidding me? Straight through buffer. I increased the torque by one tenth. Are you kidding me, man? Because sometimes if you do add buffers, you kind of like have a chance to increase the power somehow with like super low powerful edges like this. So I think I have no choice here. Go for a mechanical fuel injection race, single configuration because it's going to be too expensive once I go over here. Yep, still 13.9 or 39.90. What am I thinking there? Hold up. I think I finally cured the underpower problem here. So it's flashing right here. I could increase the fuel mixture here. Increase up by a little bit till it stops. And there we go. 17 horsepower, 16.1. But now it's just saying, hey, it's underpowered. Just make it a little bit more powerful, please. Thank you. That's all. It's not like saying, hey, you have to get a powerful engine. You have to make it powerful because it's it's poor with performing engine. Not anymore, but can I increase? Uh, okay, now I can increase the ignition timing and holy crap numbers. So 68's good enough there because if I increase it, we're definitely going to decrease the octane and decrease performance while doing so. Increase the compression, keep doing this until we're maxed out to 17.3 horsepower, 16.5 pounds feet of torque. It's probably good enough. And here we go, 0 to 62 in 100.5 seconds according to automation. In BMG, we have to find it out sooner or later. And what if I increase the top speed? Okay, 62.9, 63. Good enough, like, right here. So, vehicle's top speed, 65.7 miles an hour, and the automation top speed shows us at 63 exactly. 63 even, at a 0-62 to 62 acceleration, 103.4 seconds, so even worse than earlier. So, we're okay on front brakes, not much on rear brakes, who even cares about that? But the other thing we have to do is aerodynamics to make it more sportier. So first things first, let's get the trim model set here by adding the freaking S right here. So go to arrow mode, hold shift, and then scroll over a little bit. So P. All right, for real, for real. Change this to an S and add a dash, meaning it's a power edition sport. This will do right here, do right here-ish. Middle mouse click and scroll all the way. Wait, wait, wait. Can I resort to this or no? Oh, wait, there was? Oh, no, that's a different thing on here. Whatever, this is good enough. So it's scroll in, scroll in, scroll in. Kind of match this up a tad, and then I'll do the rest of the aerodynamics in just a sec. All right, trim is all set right here. We got the Power Edition Sport, but I'll change the colors in just a sec here. And speaking of colors, where's car bumper? Uh, make this plastic, like flat out, plain old plastic. Uh, where's plastic here? This is good enough. Your basic gray plastic, not like white plastic like this, but this is good enough. 
for the actual car color, which is the bonnet or the hood and the primary car. So let me check out my global here. I saved a lot of paint jobs here. How about flame red? Not bad. Maybe a little bit darker, probably like the Lotus Martini green like you see in the old school Formula One cars. Maybe to maybe not. Let's say screw it and go for a dark blue right here, which the game gave us Sincora. So Sincora is the paint job that it gave me, so Sincora it is. And speaking of the rest, I don't know how I'm gonna apply the spoiler on here. It's like hatchbacks in this game. There's not a whole lot of hatchback spoilers, like dedicated ones, like for this vehicle or something else. So what's this Jerry Rig one? Let's just do a duck wing type of spoiler, like a lip spoiler. Uh, what does this look like? Oh, ridiculous, but it'll generate aerodynamics. Just trust me on this one. If it fits, then it generates aero. This is probably the best I could do here. So bring it back a little bit, uh, a tad, and a tad more. I don't want, like, too much overhang here. So this is going to be the spoiler of the vehicle. Not pretty, but once it goes to aerodynamics, bring this up, it changes to none. Boom, there we go. We got uh, around 16, yeah, 16 pounds of front down force, rear around 7.2, and... Shoot, we're over budget. And it brings down top speed, so... Ah, damn it. Screw the aerodynamics. Screw it, screw it, screw it. Like, if I put, like, a basic front lip, like, let's just do it, like, right here. How much would this perform? Like, how much would this do here for the front aerodynamics? So, two pounds-ish. Negative 11.4 there. Top speed-wise, 62.5. And still $4,000, so... Don't think so. It'll be nice, but maybe a cannered. Well, it's not the prettiest of aerodynamics, but this is my so-called cannered for the front of the vehicle. When we hide the gizmo, the free cam with shift C, and just take a look at this. So we're just gonna hang this over, and it's pretty much gonna generate some downforce, a front downforce of the vehicle for this side of the uh, the front bumper and this side too. So this will decrease the front downforce by I think like a couple tenths of a downforce. So the new downforce rating is at 1.3 for the front, negative 10.9 in the back. Is like you seen earlier. If I put a back wing on here, it'll decrease the top speed and increase the cost. So with this tight of a budget, not gonna happen. You know what, let's just do, let's just change these out for side skirts. Okay, nothing basic, nothing fancy. Got your side skirt, and this is probably gonna increase the engineering time and all that good stuff, so just watch. Uh, no, it did absolutely nothing. <laughs> not like nothing, nothing, but it did something. Cost-wise, 4,000, but really? The side skirts just do absolutely nothing? That is dumb. And while we're at it, let me change back the coloring here and add a little hump on the front of the hood, like a little bump that you see on hoods. We're gonna add some of that front detail on here. And since it's a sport and more highly prestigious version of this vehicle, we're gonna add the windshield washers right here. Now you can wash your windshield without dumping water on them manually. And same thing for the back too, so let me go to here and find a place to put the rear wiper like good and put it like right here as a starting position for the wipe, like right right here, to be exact. Wiping wise, this is gonna be too big, so brought it down, here we go. Good enough, that's a rear windshield wiper. And for the first time in this vehicle, this is gonna take me a long while to do, but an interior. So this is gonna really, really take me some time to do so on here. This is why I don't really show you the builds as I'm doing, especially for brand new car builds, because it takes me hours or sometimes days to build a car. So first things first, put the seats right here. It's gonna be kind of low to the ground. We can adjust that probably. Can we maybe, maybe not. So let me try to find a basic dashboard on here, like uh, something like this, but take out the st no, steering wheel is good enough. Nothing but this here and uh, a stick shift. Our two gear stick shift, this will be good enough for this vehicle here. Okay, for the interior, it's coming up pretty well right here. I'm putting up the final touches here for the steering wheel, and I got like a couple other things here, like to get the ignition key and everything. So putting in the headlights right here and wash food, all that stuff, and bring this down a little bit more because we got to bring some room for the ignition key. So interior wise, a basic needle speedometer and change out the steering wheel too. Instead of a sports steering wheel, you get this model here, a basic ass steering wheel with the brake gas and clutch pedal with the clutch pedal going through the frame of the vehicle here. And for the center console, a basic storage area with the stick shift right here, the manual transmission shifter. You know, it's got two gears, so you just put like whatever, like an F10 to hide the UI. You can just go upshift to diagonally front left right here for first gear, then neutral forward for second gear, neutral top right for reverse. 
And that's probably gonna be it for <laughs> the shifting wise for this manual transmission of a vehicle here. So let me get the ignition key well in check here. So let me scroll down to the bottom. There should be the key somewhere. Is it on the bottom or on the top? I think it's more towards the top ish. Uh, yeah. Yes, here they are. So that's a button. That's the ignition key. That's just the key itself. Let's put the key in here. Change the snap angle to down here. And we should now see the key. God damn it. Of the vehicle. So bring it back. And it's a big guy. Where can I put this? Oh, wait, because this one's the bigger model. This is the more compact one. Let me try this again towards the steering wheel real quick. If not, then insert it towards the dashboard. Not the best, but it'll do right here. So you got your turn signals, headlights right here, windshield washer fluid, wipers, and the key ignition right here. Seems legit. So now I'm going to put the little trim thing that goes between the seats and the trunk here. And just like Jerry rigged it somewhere. It's like right about here and change it out to a different one. So seems okay. And do raise this with the 3D model. Raise this up a little bit too like uh, a little too high, a little bit lower. That's good. And last but not least, bring out the rear view mirror. We got the jerry rig it like right about here. And do shrink this down quite a bit. Like down to around here and then widen it just a tad. That seems fair enough. Let me go to the photo scene and see what it's like in the interior. All right, so go to camera, change the focal length to the human eye of around 23.2. And just slide on in. So, like, slide, like, super fast on in. Aim myself to around, like, where I'm gonna be sitting down at the seats here. Seems... Seems alright. But we are laid back quite a bit here. We can we can move up quite a bit with these seats here. We can move a lot right here. It don't matter one bit. We can adjust these in real life. Not, like, right now, this moment in the game. And also change the mirror to a more plastic color, not just paint. And after doing that, I should be okay to go to export this to BeamNG Drive once I do so. So it appears we're okay with the vehicle, even though this is poking out, but I'm not too worried about it. If this would have been a hidden build where I just build it off camera, then I would do something about that, but it don't matter right here. And the price is still at $4,000. And one slight detail, 11-inch rims. Expensive or not? Expensive, goddammit. And we're all good. Just reduce the transparency to around 65% to a more like realistic looking windows here. Maybe around 60. 60 should do. Yeah, that seems better. And do changes up to the People's Car Poverty Edition clone to the Poverty Edition Sport. Engine wise, El Cheapo V1 to El Cheapo V1 Sport. Let me see the track times on automation and the quote-unquote top gear test track. So start off with the automation test track. Let's just flat out get a time on here. So let this load, which is going to take a while because it's going to be a long time for it to load the time of this vehicle. Because I think the automation track time I got was like a... Okay, 4 minutes, 32 seconds, 38 milliseconds. I think the regular Poverty Edition car was like 6 or 7 minutes or something like that for the automation track. For the quote-unquote Top Gear track, aka the airfield track, probably like, this could be like a 220. 225 maybe, let's see. Worst, 2 minutes, 47 seconds, 48 milliseconds. And I think the regular was like 350 or something, right around there. Because it said half the top speed as the original car and was even worse. So right now, export this to BMG Drive and test this horrendous vehicle out. So here we are at the map of East Coast USA and we're doing a time trial run here at the high speed raceway section, which I think that's what it is, this layout here. So we're gonna be doing one whole lap around this track here with the People's Car Poverty Edition Sport. And after this time trial and everything, I'm probably gonna take this to the drag strip and drag race the original Poverty Edition car versus the sports model of this. And for sake of time wise, I'm not gonna be doing any basic performance tests like I usually do in my automation of BMG videos. So right now, get ready to start this race off here in three, two, one, try to get a launch. Jesus, that sounds so loud. Bring this way back. This is like hella loud. So we're struggling to go, but we're increasing at a faster, much faster rate than the original People's Car Poverty Edition. Second gear. Okay, we're not stalling out like we did in the uh, the original People's Car because once you upshift, it just like the top speed of the original one, like 30 something miles an hour. But the top speed we actually got was like around like 20 or something like that. And in second gear, it's not like the vehicle was going to stall out on you. And not only that, we're going around 35 miles an hour, even less now, because we're slightly going uphill. Two, we're rolling coal with no catalytic converters with the exhaust in this vehicle. What if I get an interior view of how loud this thing is, like hood view? 
God damn. That sounds so loud. I have it turned down right here, and here we go. Reducing speed. And still reducing speed. Can you... Here we go, and... 15 to 16 horsepower, and we're struggling to go up a hill. Look at all that smoke, dude. <laughs> Man, it's gonna take a while. It's pretty much a bad idea to take it around this track here. I should have took this on like the automation test track or somewhere flat, but high high speed, like a high pace track, but relatively flat. But we're going downhill, and that's a good sign. We're going downhill and increasing speed than ever before this vehicle, and we're going up another uphill. God dang it, man. And the speed limit said 40 miles an hour. We're going 1,500 speed limit, even less of this little uphill stretch. So wait for the downshift right about now. Right on cue, 15 miles an hour, around like 1,400 RPM. And okay, we got a big, big downhill right here. I think it's gonna stay downhill for a while until we get some flat land around the bridge crossing here. So here we go, 50 miles an hour. Zoom in a little, concentrate. 60, 62, oh my God. 66 miles an hour, airspeed 65. This is a, this is a record breaking. <laughs> we finally reached highway speeds with this vehicle. This is unbelievable. Look at this. Can it take this corner here of 105 millimeter cross ply tires? Yes, it is. Go hard right here. Not bad. Not bad at all. But now we're decreasing speed at flat land here. Still going to highway speeds around a high 50s, 58 right now. Still flat land. We got another small corner up here, a small uphill right here. And it got a left turn coming up, so let's just keep gunning it. Okay, big downhill stretch. Get ready for another red line. Get into that little time thingamajig. The license plate is jiggling. Oh my god, son. Okay, this is much better than before. Instead of getting all those uphills and everything, now we got these downhill stretch that says bump. Uh, who even cares? If we're past the gas station going 14 miles over the speed limit, 15 right now. That speed limit's at 50 miles an hour, but we're going highway speeds, redlining again, and a small uphill. And now we're going to expect a speed loss here, going 60-ish and dropping now. And we should be at like 60 to 65, maybe 70% done with this track here. I think our finish time will be around like the 550 mark, 530 or something like that. And I am surprised, even at flat land, we are still increasing speed. And we're going to like redline again, 64, and other uphill, so 64 on that little run right there. This is impressive. Despite the vehicle costing $4,000, this is well worth it. <laughs> a well worth it of an upgrade from a 30 mile an hour vehicle to around 66. This is excellent. Okay, do you remember this? So let's just gun it. Gun it. Utter steering, and we're good. 48 miles an hour. That was a, a good turn right there. Not too bad. And here we go, we got blue up ahead, so it's gonna be a five minute finish time. I was pretty much right in the five minute mark. So for the finish time, going over the speed limit here of a five minute, 10 seconds, 865 milliseconds. That is much faster, a little bit quicker than I expect. I was thinking like a 530, but it's, a, it's all right. So let me just find a way to end its misery and go to the drag strip at West Coast USA. So bus stop, kill me. Damn, that killed you pretty good. <laughs> So we screwed up big time. We got the front tires just tow in right here. And can I reverse? No, we are immobile because of how underpowered this vehicle is and it being front wheel drive. So that is the look at the damage here. We also got the back end pretty good right here. Some sharp polygons there, but that is it with this vehicle. So right now, take you to the West Coast USA at the drag strip portion and see how this vehicle, the Poverty Edition Sport, will handle against the regular Poverty Edition vehicle. So here I am at the drag strip portion of West Coast USA and just right behind me, struggling to get to the line here is the original People's Car Poverty Edition. It's just as loud as the sports model here. And this is the one that can go around 30 miles an hour. The original one that will go over the line. So let's bring it back a little bit, cousin. There we go. Good enough. So this is the one that I made a few months ago that reached its like goal of over 75 likes. This is the regular People's Car Power Edition, and not only that, why are my headlights... Oh, god dang it, man. Sometimes working with automation lighting is kind of a pain to work with here and there, especially when you try to get the right lightings to put it in the beam that you drive. Alright, get myself on the light. Let's do a realistic gearbox, so we'll get ready. And wait for it. One light. He's too light. And two light. Wait for it. And go. And here we go, top speed of 0-62 to 62 test underway with this vehicle, and... 
we're all performing it big time. Let's get ready to go to second gear now. And second gear, we're cruising along. This guy is getting blown away, eating by dust right now. Going 30 right now, and we're halfway there to the quarter mile line. And for the finish time, I'm going to be going around 36.5 miles an hour of a speed, or a time of 37 seconds, 273 milliseconds. Let's check out the regular uh, first gear. Let's get you the second gear. Oh yeah, I forgot this thing stalls out, so let's just... <laughs> Take his point of view, 14 miles an hour. It's stalling out right now, 13, let's go to first gear. Let's just ease the pain off for this guy. And he will get a time of 65 seconds, 701 milliseconds of a speed of 15.43 miles an hour. Jesus Christ, man. That is a significant improvement from the sports bottle to the OG bottle here. 20 miles an hour faster compared to this guy. And around 30 seconds quicker than one another. Jesus, man. So we'll be trying to turn around and get a head-on crash before we take this out somewhere. It's like probably uh, Cards of Arena will do. Because we can go really fast, go down the ramp, and crash it at a very high speed on that map. You can do it on Brutal Slope too, but uh, let's do Cards of Arena instead. So uh, everything as is, slow it down, head-on crash, direct head-on crash, 60 times slow-mo, boom. Head-on crash, here we go, and full time. Radiator leaking for both of us here. Uh, how's he doing? Radiator leaking me. Can you go forward, dog? No, you can't. How about me? Can I go to first gear and go? Uh, yes, I can. Let's just bat him one more time and go to car jump arena. So bat him again and just call it quits right here and there. So shut my engine off. Shut my engine off so I can talk here. So take you to car jump arena to see if this thing could take to new heights despite its relatively low price tag. So here we are at the top of Car Jump Arena here with the People's Car Poverty Edition Sport. And what's late for the lights here? So we got a three light, four light, five light, and get ready for the green right now. Green, so let's get out going at a very, very slow speed here and see what's it like driving down at a very high speed at the top of the Car Jump Arena map. And oh my god, zero to 62 in 11.62 seconds and 304.85 feet. Uh, cover your airdrops right about now. Wasn't that loud than uh, usual, so 120 something miles an hour, 127 upon exit, and we're gonna nail it. No, we're not. We're gonna go end of red, radiator leaking. Who even cares? The engine is dead, so let's just do it as is, roll over. Holy screeching sound, and pretty much come to a rest right here. That's a brutal rear end crash, so damage wise, got the rear screwed up a little bit, sides, yeah, front. Quite a bit because we went end over end, and this, not so much on the left side. So last part of the video, go to first gear and just drive down at a high speed to get a high speed crash test at the last bridge pillar of this bridge. So shifting into second gear with the car at freaking ear rape levels right here and get a worse 0 to 62 time in a time of 19 seconds, 48 milliseconds of a distance of 687.22 feet. That's pretty bad, and wait for it. There it goes. Engine is dead around the high 90s and stop. Sold the camera down to a 16. Free cam, hide the UI, and get this set to around right around here. Reset the FOV. Uh, you're going to resume physics at 3, 2, 1, go. 16, and boom. There goes the front end. About squared it off big time. I mean, big time. So, full time. And like that. Okay, we already did kill the engine because it overread. I'm dumb. I'm kind of used to like regular high speed vehicles. You crash it at a high speed and like the engine still runs somehow, but this is not the case because we overrevved and killed it. So looking at the damage of the vehicle, if I can get this to a relatively good position here. So damage wise, we squared this off and flattened this off pretty good here. And as you can see at the side of the vehicle, <laughs> yeah, that's like flat as hell right here. The back end we did. Ooh, okay. We got some screwiness to poly guys right here at the back of the vehicle. That is pretty interesting. Right side, pretty much the same thing as the left side. How about the interior? Let's uh, get an interior. Well, how does this look? Uh, you're the passenger. Your leg's body is pretty much scrunched up between the wheel, steering wheel, dashboard. Passenger, same fate. But instead of a wheel, he'll be crunched up against the dashboard. So both passenger and driver would have been dead in his vehicle. Without a doubt. So that'll do it with automation and BBG Drive with the People's Car Poverty Edition Sport. Well, it was well worth it with the wait around a few months to get an updated and more sportier model of the People's Car, the Poverty Edition model of this vehicle. 
Well, the original one had a very abysmal top speed of around in the teens. This could actually reach its top speed at the right place when you go downhill and pretty much forever on flat land. I do consider this, despite the price tag of $4,000, a well worth an upgrade between a $3,500 cheap ass vehicle. And also, just to throw up another ambitious light goal, if this gets 60 likes, I will make a racing model, a flat out racing model of the People's Car Poverty Edition. So you got the regular model, the sport model, and a flat out race model, which will probably set the budget to around like $6,000 or something like that. Hopefully that will be possible in the near future. So this has been Mr. Dragon Triple Zero. I'll see you in the next video.